What's up, what's up? Welcome to another episode of the Food Community Podcast. I am Rich Homie Juan, LA Icon with me as usual. What up? And today we got MC Magic in the building. What's up? Saludos, Food Community. Thanks for inviting your boy, MC Magic. No, thank you for coming through. Mr. AZ side is all the way live. <laughs> <laughs> <That's right>. <laughs> <laughs> How was the flight? You know, I take a lot of flights, bro. And Facts. They, they are all, they're all pretty much the same after a minute. You just go up and go down. You know, hour flight from from here to uh, from Phoenix to L.A. You know? uh, one hour. What do you mean one hour? It's only one hour. One hour, yeah. That's fucking amazing. I don't think I'm ever gonna drive for five hours again. Yeah, no, nah, that's five six hours for me because I like to stop and get snacks. Mando, you see me? Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> What's the worst turbulence you've ever experienced on a flight? Uh, if on a small plane. So, so the small planes are really. Uh, one time we were going to Yakima, Washington, and uh, we were on like American Eagle. Six of us. What is that? A Cessna or some shit? Or I smaller? Think it, was, it was bigger than. Uh, it was. It was a large Cessna. I I don't know what kind of plane it was. I got you. But it was about a it was about a twenty passenger, so six of us were in the plane, and uh, you know it got crazy. Uh, my wife used to travel with me, and she's like, "I don't want to get on planes no more." So I don't think that was the flight that that that, that made the final decision. But after a few <laughs> minutes, she was like, "That's it, I'm done." Yeah, I don't think I'd like to travel on a small plane just based on everyone's turbulence stories. Yeah. I mean, I mean, per per percentage wise. There's like, you know, a thousand times percent more car accidents than airplanes. No, absolutely. Yeah, we all hear the story. Yeah, I feel it. But you know, it <coughs> is. What's your favorite airline? Um, the one that gets me there on time. <laughs> I Actually, I've been, I, I, I was just telling somebody, I've been flying Southwest forever, and they've only lost my bag. I was telling you. Ten I times. Lost my bags like ten times. That like seems like a lot, but out of a thousand times, it's no, not no, that bad. No, no, in like 25 years, bro. Oh, shit. 25 years of flying. So I got love for Southwest, and I'm trying to get an endorsement, too. Yeah, shout out to Southwest. What airline would you never ever fly again? Oh, I'm not. I'm, I'm not. I'm not picky at all, man. I, I, if if that's the line that's going, if it's got to be Spirit, if it's got to be. I've never flown Spirit. Is it really that bad, or it's not that bad? Honestly, I haven't either, but I will give it a shot. <laughs> <laughs> I respect it. Yeah, the best flights are the ones that go overseas, like when you're going to Hawaii, to Japan. The flight that I've taken to Oahu was cool yeah not very turbulent mm. and i feel like we have a better chance of surviving if we crash in water versus crashing on land <laughs> well there was that one uh that one pilot that landed in lake, Mich lake michigan denzel denzel's character that's right he flew upside down yeah a la madre de veras. and that f and it was d and he was duing oh snap <laughs> that's i didn't see the movie bro yeah it's about him being a drunk ass pilot oh okay <laughs> i mean he still did some miraculous but he was a drunk. Yeah, That's yeah, thing. for sure, for sure. So let's start at the very beginning for people that are living under a rock and have no idea about you. Yeah. Where did you uh, Where did you grow up and how was it growing up there, my brother? Um, well, my, my, my folks came over from Mexico when I was like five. Where are they from? Nogales, Sonora. That's right. Nogales, Sonora. I've been to Sonora. Si. Yeah. Obregón. Yes, and I, my 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 memories of actually growing up is when I when I was old enough to really recognize things. So like at ten, my dad left left my mom and the kids, and my mom had to apply for like government housing. So we went to live in the projects. That's right. And so I grew up in the projects mostly, man. Shout out to to the government for that free cheese, you know. What 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 part of Phoenix are the projects in? In Phoenix, I lived in the Cofell projects. And then, uh, and then they put us in the Section 8 program that gives you an actual house. Fire. So we got a house uh, out on the west side. And then they moved, moved us further west when my mom said, we need a bigger house. <laughs> and then so they had an apartment at, at, at these projects called Dog Patch Projects. That's what the street called them, but I think they were actually called Garden Homes. We have uh, some dog patch areas in Los Angeles All as right. well. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, yeah, and the, and the dog patch is where Avondale, and that's where I finished up my high school. Oh, I'm familiar with Avondale. Yeah. That's right. Does your mom still live there? Nah, nah. We bought, we bought my mom. And you guys uh, didn't let another family member live in there when you moved out? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep it under the radar. Yeah, well. Nah, I think plenty of family members came to stay with us. My nana stayed with us, a couple of tios. Yeah, there was plenty of family members that stayed with us. That's right. Did you have a rough growing up right there? Like any trouble you got into? I, I, you know, 
I, I, I really, I really didn't have any, any problem. I've, I've always been a friendly dude, so I got along with everybody. There's always a couple of knuckleheads that try to test you and stuff. You look like a bully fool. I'm not gonna lie. When you shook my hand earlier, you brought me a in. Firm handshake is mando, brother. <laughs> the handshake was cool, but you brought me in. I was oh, like, okay. oh getting manhandled i'm all 300 pounds who's throwing me around like a rag doll <laughs> and something about you yeah but nothing nothing tough i was always i was always the guy that started the breakdance crew that started that's right you know the the, the dj crew uh, putting on dances for the community i was that guy not uh, not really anything else i respect I've it i've been i've been an entrepreneur for a long time you could break dance or did you pop lock yeah i used to break i could still do a backflip bro I can still today do a backflip. What's it going to take for you to do a backflip at the food community right now? Uh, I'm being serious. How much cash you got in your pocket, bro? I could sell you. <laughs> can I sell you a hundred bucks? Nah, I, I don't, I don't want to do it because my wife is going to be like, te hicieron pendejo. <laughs> you gonna say that? Please, fool, please. You want me to do a backflip? I swear. I'll do it right here. I'm Let him move the table, though. <laughs> We're moving the table, my boy. <laughs> Help me, big dog. <laughs> Fucking MC Magic. Move this shit all the way out of the way. I don't want this shit to get hurt. Y'all ready? Hold on, this is gonna go viral. Here we go, one. Let me take my hat off and my shades. One, two, three. Woo! Oh, dang. It was, it was a froggy one today. That's MC Magic right. did a backflip. I don't give a fuck about that. Did it, right? <laughs> MC Magic did a backflip. <laughs> MC Magic did a backflip. I don't give a fuck about anything else. You can just leave it there. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bad dude. You didn't even have to do that. Uh, man, we, we, what do you want for lunch? Uh, you know, I, 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 um, I was looking off the, the airplane right now, and I saw that they have California Pizza Kitchen. You like that? I like CPK. They have this, uh, they have this dish called the, uh, the jalapeno chicken, something like that. Jam the jambalaya. I think it's a jambalaya. But it's dope. It's got like a, it's got like spicy sauce. I like that. I'm mad at that. CBK sauce. And my wife don't let me eat bad too often, so I gotta sneak it gotta in when slurge. you can. Yeah, I got, I got a splurge when I'm on the road. I feel it. I think we're gonna have to order this man some CPK right now, my boy. Well, yes, sir. sir. That was fire. <laughs> you didn't think I was gonna do it, huh? I didn't know if you were aware. I don't put nothing past nobody yeah. these days. Well, it was really a handspring, but it, you know, it still flipped back. I respect Close it. Enough. For sure. If I were to do that, I would have been hurt badly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I am. No, I'm just messing <laughs> <laughs> That shit took me off guard. Okay, so clearly you can still break dance. I don't need to ask if you could do a windmill at this point. I don't yeah, think. Yeah, I won't try that one. <laughs> Especially <laughs> on a carpet. That was badass. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, growing up, we did, you know, we did a uh, um, break dance crew. We did car washes. You know, I've been that community organizer for a long time, bro. You're going to have to tag the food community in that post, my brother. <laughs> Please. That was crazy. Um, yeah, I'm still shot out from that backflip. Damn. So, yeah. So what was one of the, if you could remember back, what was one of the favorite functions you put together during those days? You know, one, one, of, the, one of the beautiful things is uh, I used to live in the city of Avondale. And, and, I, and, and I decided to go to, to the city hall. And they told me, I said, I, I want to rent the, the city. They have a senior center. They have a senior center, but the seniors leave, you know, <laughs> and it's, it's available on the weekend. Yes. So I told um, I told the city manager, her name is Linda Tyler. I was like, I want to I want to do these dances for the community, for the youth. She's like, you're 14 years old. You are the youth. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, yeah. But listen, you keep them off the street. My boy had a vision. I'm going to play music. So it, it was like a sock hop type thing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Obviously, I just called it a sock hop, but everybody wore shoes. Uh, and um and so Linda, she laughed at me, and, and I'm like, "What? You know, can I rent it?" She goes, "I'm gonna give you a chance. I'm gonna give you a chance to use it." She goes, "But you gotta pay the cleaning deposit." I said, "What's the cleaning deposit?" She goes, "Fifty bucks." I'm like, "I got that." She goes, "And if you clean it, we'll give you your fifty bucks back." <laughs> 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 so my first, uh, my first dance at the at the at the uh, the community center in Avondale. I think we raised like 450 bucks. Fire. It was dope. I think we're charging a dollar fifty, two bucks or something like that. It was something slight. Yeah, yeah. It was my first uh my first hustle. But now it's mcmagicconcerts.com. <laughs> Facts. <laughs> You're a busy guy. I do stay busy and I love to stay busy. What's it like what's it like just going on tour as often as you do? It's like 
it's got to be a rush. It's become my lifestyle, bro. It's become my lifestyle. You know, I love meeting fans. I love taking photos with every one of them. I love the stories that they share with me. So putting on concerts and being and being out there in the middle, I'm living the dream, really. Facts. Yeah. You really, really, truly are. Uh, what's what's a like? good story that sticks out from one of your fans that really touched you? Uh, there's always good stories. Um, like recently, one of my fans from Sacramento, she told me she was having a birthday around the time that we had a concert in San Diego. She says, I've never been to San Diego. So I gave her a, a free pair of tickets to come to San Diego. So her and her husband came down and that was pretty dope. Claudia has been around forever. Um, and I, you know, I really like it when, the, when, when the kids start singing the music. Mm-hmm. Mm. And they always want to come on stage. Like my little, the little kids want to come on stage, and, and it's because you know they learned it from their mom or their older sister or their tia, and you know there's something about you, baby. They go hard with it, and to me that that's a gift that keeps on giving. You know what I'm saying? Facts. That's is that the safe to say that's your biggest hit? Uh, no, nah, pretty girl. I, I would say I would say sexy lady is really my biggest. Sexy lady with the pretty brown eyes. Yeah, that, that's that. That gets. I actually did a poll the other day, and that came in at number one. Sexy lady. Really? Yeah, I did a, a Instagram poll. I like it. Came in at number one. The numbers don't lie, right? The yeah, fans yeah, literally came voted. In at number one. So I love that. I love. I love. I love all of them. You know, they all got a little special part, a little place in my heart. Kind of like kids. You know, like they're my children. Absolutely. What's it like touring with uh, Rob? And Bash. It's mostly Rob, right? Rob and Bash are family. Yeah, we do we we've done more shows with Rob because that's the like the that's like the dynamic duo, you know what I'm saying? Me and No, Rob. I feel it. And uh and so we do more shows with Rob, but all three of us, me, Rob and Bash, it's just it's all family. And it's beautiful because there's no egos, there's no problems, there's no issues. Everybody understands you know each other's uh style uh, and there's a lot of respect, you know. Sometimes I'll close down the show. Sometimes uh, Bash will uh, close the show. So it just, you know, it's all love. You know what I'm saying? That's dope. Do you have any records with either of them? Uh, we just recorded a brand. Yes, I do. I've been on, on several records for Bash. And uh, I wrote this one called California for Lil Rob. And I just do a talk box on that. I was raised on the streets of California. Uh, I produced that for Rob on, on, on one of his like first albums. And then, uh, and we just recorded a new song, all three of us. It's called Can We Kick It? And it makes absolute sense for you guys yes. to have a record yes. together. And that'll be on my new album. This comes Ha-ha! Out. You got to keep that one. That's yes, right. sir. Yes, sir. Damn. That's going to be dope. What's, uh, what city do you think you guys get the most love in? Well, well, because L.A. is so big, L.A. is market number one. Analytically, it's market number one. I mean, over here, you know, we're, we're, we're catering to 20 million people in, in one area, you know what I'm saying? And as opposed to every other, uh, every other uh, market, some markets that we go to don't even have a million people, you know what I'm saying? That makes sense. And so it is our number one analytical market, uh, and there's so many cities, you know? Like, people from Santa Ana don't want to go downtown L.A. People Facts. From, you know what I'm saying? Vice versa. Exactly. Then you could go all the way to the IE or all something. All the way to the IE, even up there in Barstow. Or I can go to Lancaster. Or, Valid. You know, I mean, it's, the 805 is just right up the road. You know what I'm saying? It's limitless. <laughs> My yeah, yeah. It's caking up every there's, time there's, he lands there's here. Just, there's just so much. There's just so much uh, real estate and, and so many fans. That we, we're concentrated with our target demographic. You know what I'm saying? That's awesome. Talk to. Let's go. Let's rewind back again. Talk to me about when you first decided you wanted to start dabbling in the music and stuff like that. Because obviously you're already throwing the events, you're already breakdancing, you're bringing the people together. You already obviously have a good shoulder on your heads at a young age. When did you decide it was time for you to pick up the mic? Well, to be honest... Or were you producing first? My bad. No, no. To be honest with you, uh, I love music so much as a kid, but I didn't <clears throat> feel worthy of it. Mm. Like when I, when, I, when I would hear myself sing, I'm like, nope, you're not a singer. <laughs> you're, not a, you're definitely not a singer. And so I wanted to be in music so bad... Uh, and, and, and my fix in initially was DJing. So I DJed for a long time. Uh, and then, uh, right around, I, I want to say late, l- late eighties, early nineties is, is when I, f- I first heard rappers delight. I said, a hip hop, the hip to the hip, the hip, hip, a hop, you don't stop. That was my introduction to, to rap right there. And when I, when I heard it, I was like, yo, I could do this. 
you know, but because of my personal influence by my mom's kitchen music, clean the house music, you know, when she's, you know, playing Juan Gabriel, Jose Jose, Luis mm -hmm. Miguel, all that stuff, I naturally had that amor in me. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. And so I took hip hop and blended it with love songs and boom, created a whole genre. When did you start doing the talk box? I first, I first uh, did talk box through Roger Troutman. Uh, I had produced a song called Down For Yours, If You Down For Mine. Yep, legendary that, shit. Yeah, that was from my Nasty Boy Click album. Uh, and then when I finished that record, I knew it was good. I go, but it just needs a little spark so what the, so what the people at the radio station can hear it and be like, yo, this has to get played. Because getting airplay was back rough. then is equivalent to going viral today. Facts. Because there's no internet mm -hmm. back in the day. That was so, the internet. Yeah, you had to, you, man, we had to kiss every radio station's ass and it was just it was crazy um so anyway i decided i wanted to feature roger troutman uh now roger troutman is the heart of, of course that. you know what i'm saying and, and when i say this in interviews sometimes people don't even know who he is you know what i'm saying so I, I take it back a little bit and and so when i reached out to roger troutman he said you know i just did a big record for for tupac and dre you know, mm -hmm. know you california it, love come on come on raj so he had just done California Love, and he said to me, he said, he said Dre paid me eighteen thousand dollars to do that, and I'm like, yeah, that, yeah, I don't, man, what can you do for me though, you know? What <laughs> what I mean? And then Roger said, <laughs> I'll do ten, and I didn't have, I didn't have any money in my account, maybe close to a grand or so, and I said, yes, let's do it, savage, because. A leap of faith, like when, when there's an opportunity, do not cease the moment. You feel me? And there was an opportunity there, and I said, yes, let's do it. I pulled all my resources together. I sold, like, one of my cars, uh, asked for loans. I remember I went to American General Finance, and they approved me for three grand. I'm like, yes. And so we got it together, and in, in, and in two days, I had him a, I had him a $5,000 $5, bundle of money. He didn't want it deposited in no checking account. He wanted, he wanted it wrapped in foil, put in a FedEx pack. He said if you wrap it in foil, they can't really scan it and see that it's money in there. And so I, I, I sent it FedEx overnight, and he's like, okay, I just need an airplane ticket to Arizona now. And this was 96. The record came out in 97, and it set off fire for us, man. The guys at the radio station went bananas for it. And the beautiful thing about it, back in the day, it, in, in Phoenix, there was two radio stations competing. It was Power 92 versus 103.9 The Party. And 103.9 The Party was the, the station on the east side of town with not that good of a signal. <laughs> they wanted it so bad, and they were fighting. And then my, my song came out at the right time, and they both played it like a zillion times a day. So we, we went viral, and it was it. Is this before the swap meet stuff or after? Uh, in between, during, before, and after. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the swap meet stuff was, was an era that I actually, I, I, I went through it, I released some music, and then I came back to it. Uh, ah. And then I came back to it because I needed money. You know? Oh, so I was, you asked me a talk box. After working with Roger, he died. He died, and, and I felt like, yo, I can never feature Roger again. And then, again, I got this crazy idea in my head. Why don't, I can do you, why don't you ask Roger's brothers to, sell, to, to make you a talk box just like Roger's? And so I, I hit up Lester Troutman, who's always been the manager of the group, and, and now it's Lester Jr. who manages the group. So I hit up Lester, and I was like, Les, what would it take for you to build me a talk box just like Roger's? And, and I could feel I could I could feel him over the phone like, what the f you know what I'm saying? He was like, he's like, and how much are you willing to pay? And I was like, I did the math in my head. I I, I could go to Guitar Center and get a talk box for like two hundred bucks. And I said less. I got a thousand bucks less. And he's like, okay, go on eBay, buy this keyboard, send that to me with the money order for a thousand dollars. He said, I'll see what I can do for you. <laughs> so I did. I did, and uh, uh, like two months later, I got a talk box in the mail, and I started messing with it. It took me about a good year. This was, it was 99 when I got it, because it took me a whole year to learn to use it. And then finally, I was on one of our records doing talk box. I would give my life for you. Uh -huh. You mean the world to me, baby, baby. That was me. <laughs> that was the first time I played talk box, and I didn't even know what keys to hit. 
my friend who owns a studio, Johnny Robo, shout out Porcupine Studios. Uh, he's the one. He goes, you got to touch that key, that key, that key. I would get okay. So he taught me how to play uh, my own song. You know what I'm saying? I tell him this is what I wanted to say. He's like, yeah, these are. The so I put green tape on each one of the keys. <laughs> so I remember which one it was, and that's how I learned to play uh, "Runaway." Now you know, now I can do it I all suppose. day, every day. Yeah. That's amazing. So how well do you know how to play the piano at this point? I'm not even a light player of any music of, of any instrument. I produce uh, I produce through the computer, through making beats. You got to have some sort of knowledge of the keys for you to hit. I mean, of the notes. Is it the key or the note? Well, a key is the actual key. A note is what tone it's using. So exactly. C, A, B, C, D. So if you played a if you if you played a C, I couldn't recognize it. There's there's musicians that can say, "Oh, that's a C sharp." You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I can't recognize it. All I know is when I hear music, I know what melody. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I love it. That's I know nice. what melody fits with it, and, and and I like it that way because it comes from the heart. You know? Nah, absolutely. That's amazing. Yeah. So talk to me about your your swap me exploits. What was it like over there? How did you? When did it, okay, so did you start selling records at the Swami or did you get a stand at the Swami and start doing the dedications and stuff? Like, explain at that to me. At first, it wasn't my idea to go to the Swap meet. Uh, recently, my homeboy Tim Reed just passed away. Rest in peace, Tim Reed. Uh, Tim used to be, yeah, Tim used to be my DJ assistant. Like, he would go with me to parties and help me set up the speakers. Mm -hmm. And one day he came over to the house. I don't figure what he stopped in for. And I was making a beat. And it kind of sounded like DJ Quick's Tonight is the Night. And then, and then, uh, and he like, did you make that? I'm like, yeah, I just did it right now. And he's like, <laughs> how long did it take you? I was like, man, making this beat by 15 minutes? He said, magic, you know everybody want to be a rapper. He said, why don't we go to a swap meet, sell these beats, we get rich. <laughs> I respect it. <laughs> and you so did that, too. <laughs> so that was Tim's idea to go to the swap meet to sell beats. Well, we sat in the hot sun at the swap meet and didn't sell one beat. How long was that for? Didn't sell one beat. You know, like we stayed a whole day, and 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 uh, and I didn't want to. I don't want to come. I don't want to come back. I'm like, we didn't sell nothing. And Tim's like, come on, man, let's go again. Somebody gonna buy a beat. <laughs> and, and so uh, and so we went again, and this time they still didn't buy beats. But one dude said, I'll take one. He said he said I'll take one. I was like, all right. So I made him his little beat. And I'm like uh, about to put it on a cassette form. There was no recordable CDs yet. Yes. I was about to put it on a cassette form. He's like, yo, 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 ain't you gonna rap on it? And I was like, you want me to rap on your beat? I thought you just wanted the beat. He's like, no, nah, make a song for me, bro. And I'm like, well, well, well. Um, a star was born. Yeah. And he said, make it about my girl. Her name was Jessica or something. And I started, I started freestyling about Jessica, and then we got a, a line. And so everybody wanted a song about somebody they loved. And that's how it started, bro. No talk box at this moment. No, no. Just uh, rapping no, straight th up. Th this was, this was, so, so, so this was probably uh, 1992, bro. I didn't start playing the talk box till, till 2000. 2000, yeah. That's yeah. vicious. And so I was doing freestyles at the swap meet for years. Bro. And this is before the Nasty Boy stuff. Yeah, I, I, I'm my, I, I started my label Nasty Boy Records in 1990. Uh, but I didn't release my first album till five years after I founded the label. 95 was my first solo album. That's the one that had Lost in Love on it. Gotcha. And then after, and then, and then I was already working on my sophomore album. But today, feature heavy is real, real common. Back of then, it wasn't. wasn't a thing. So, so because I was so feature heavy, I thought, man, this feels more like a compilation. And, I, and so I named it Nasty Boy Click. The click that rocks with Nasty Boy Records, you feel me? And so they took us as a group, and we we just it went from there. How did you meet the members of uh, of your group that you were from? Uh, at first, they were introduced to me uh, by by a uh, by a homie who was trying to manage them. Um, they were both solo artists, or they were a duo. Well, well, Dawson Zig, they were they were like uh, like uh, street rappers. I think they went to high school together, and they would do you know you know they were out there battle rapping and all that. I feel it. You know, and I was doing and I was doing my lost in love thing, and then this kid named Aaron, uh, we call him Sly. A Sly used to work for me at the swap meet, <laughs> and so when when I when I was doing my my sophomore album and I was p putting these songs together, 
I was like, man, this sounds like a compilation. So that's what we did. And I invited Sly to be on one song. That's right. And I brought in uh, Dos and Zig. <clears throat> they were actually uh, introduced to me by the, the guy who was their manager, but I wasn't interested in their style back then. Um, later, my, my DJ partner, Too Swift, he told me, man, you should, you should rock with Ziggy, man. He's dope. And so that's when I started to work with him, when Zig uh, uh, came over to rap on DJ Two Swift's, uh, DJ Two Swift was doing a mixtape, and I was recording it for him. Uh, and Two Swift might 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 get you a little confused because there's several Two Swifts. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 You saw that come over my face. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I saw I saw you uh, getting confused. So this is Phoenix DJ Two Swift. I respect. His him. name is Oscar, and yes. uh, and he's the one that introduced me to Zig again. I had already met him, but I, like I said, I wasn't crazy. You guys about got reacquainted. Yeah. Yeah. And then. Uh, and then so that's when I invited him to be part of more of my music. And it just it just it just it really just felt together organic, you know, like one song at a time. How was the MB Writers era for you? From Nasty Boy Click, we uh, Nasty Boy Click, we had two albums and it was always difficult, bro. Right from the gate, it was difficult. Uh, I was doing my own style and and uh, and they wanted to do like street songs. And I'm like, that's, that's, that's not really my style, guys. And they're like, yeah, but that's our style. I go, yeah, but this is my project. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> And so we never really did any street songs. The most we did some, uh, some, uh, some like battle rap type stuff, but yeah, it, it, that was never my thing, you know. Yeah, yeah, I don't really see you I, dissing. I just battle, wanna, you wanted to. Be, I just want, didn't want to do something that was fake, not real me. You know what I'm saying? Keeping it real is important, even if you're doing absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Uh, just like keeping it real for a recipe that you're making for something to eat, it's got to keep it real. And so. Um, we struggled in the beginning and it was fun struggling together. It's actually dope when you struggle with somebody. It's hard to succeed with somebody because once, once the success starts coming, uh, other, other people get it. in your homeboy's ear yes. and they, and you know, and then there's family members and nah, blah, blah, blah. And so it, it started, it started to feel like I was wrestling them and their families through the conversations that we were having. And so it was tough. Uh, and I actually broke up the group right away, uh, after, after the first album. Uh, but the radio station, remember I told you about that little station that was hustling, 1039? They called me. The party. Like, the party. Yeah, it was 1039 The Party. So Rick was the programmer there. He called me. He's like, Magic, do you have any more songs that sound like Down For Yours? I was like, well, my song Lost In Love mm -hmm. from my first album. He goes, bring it. Let me hear it. Boom. Yeah. So, matter of fact, we probably weren't even doing email back then. So I drove the, <laughs> I drove the record to the radio station, and he's like, this is going to work. And it became an instant smash on the radio. That's amazing. And so because so, Lost in Love was taken off, they called us for another album. And it was another label now. This is uh, Upstairs Records. They called us for another album. And, uh, and he's like, yeah, this new Nasty Boy Click song called Lost in Love. I'm like, no, no, that's an MC Magic record. And, and John, the owner of the label, said, well, can we call it Nasty Boy Click? Because, like, the, the group is what's popular right now. You know, the group name. And I'm like, yeah, let's do it. So, Yeah, market to show how you got to so get we did it. So we did it like that, and it blew up, and, and then he wanted another album. So I was like, all right, well, I'll work with the guys again. And, uh, and you know, and it's, it's always been like a, like, like a, like a pull, a pull and tug and pull like that, because creatives are like that, bro. No, that's casual. Yeah, creatives are like that, and so yeah, not everyone's always gonna agree. Yeah, we did another album. And yeah, that's the beautiful part that you guys were able to get beyond whatever bullshit there was, and yeah. still be able to create. Yeah, yeah, some timeless shit for of course, for of everyone. Course. You know, what yeah, I'm saying? yeah. And then so, then you carried on. Yeah. Well, after we did two two Nasty Boy Click albums, um, I asked again Upstairs Records just to release me. I'm like, you could you could keep the boys, keep the group. I, I just want to be released. And so <clears throat> they gave me documentation that Magic was no part, no, no longer Your part of that. Of resignation, yeah. Yeah, and me, my son, my son Marco, and my nephew Darren, we started NB Riders. You know, and then when I showed Dos and Zig what we were doing, Dos is like, "Yo, I want to be a part of it." And so it just became from NBK to. So he asked to be released from Upstairs Records, and he came over and joined my NB Riders movement. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and then and then Zig came along later as well. And eventually, my son, my my, my son, uh, he was he was only eleven years old, <laughs> but I just needed group members at the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was already convinced that the group thing was the way to go. The, you the, know? the lick, yeah. Again, it comes it goes back to not feeling worthy. A lot of times, we don't feel like we're worthy of the success that we can make, the songs that we can make. And I felt like I had to have a team, you know. I feel it. I try I try to tell my kids about that. Like you're enough by yourself. 
go do it. You know, you you can establish some some partners, but it sucks because because uh, you know, w- you do something great with two people, and then there's there's always a conflict somewhere or another. You know, at some point. Yeah. Well, I mean, the legend continues. No doubt, man. It's 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 always it's really always been MC Magic songs. I've just called them different things. Who cares? You know what I'm saying? It went up. Yeah. It went up. You and I mean. Yes. You're blessed, to say the least. Very blessed. Very blessed. I mean, I'm about to release another album right now. This is probably the the fifteenth album I, I produced myself. How well do you know Bootleg Kev? Well, me and Bootleg, the reason Bootleg's name was Bootleg is because he was selling bootleg CDs at the swap meet. <laughs> <laughs> did you see the clip that we released? <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> yeah, I did. And that's my homie. Bootleg was working at the radio station. Uh, it was after his his swap meet hustle. He was working at the radio station. And then Mikey, the programmer, he invited me to go be a DJ at the radio station. So me and Bootleg were both employees of the same company for a while. That's dope. Yeah, yeah. Kind of like working for Power 106. It's Power uh, 98. Back when you were doing your thing, did you did you hear murmurs of people bootlegging your CDs and shit and pushing oh, them? Oh, yeah. I used to see it. Matter of fact, there was a couple of people that we had. We had fallouts, permanent fallouts. <sighs> Permanent fallouts. I'm like, yo, man, I'm over here hustling in my booth, and you selling bootleg copies of my stuff. Like, seven spaces well, away. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, well, magic, people want to buy it. <laughs> I will like, shoot me a cut at least. Yeah, yeah nothing. Uh, but, but you know, I, I recently saw that saw that fool uh, like a year ago, and I'm like, I'm just going to say what's up to him. Ain't no reason to hold a grudge. And To the dude that got caught up? Yeah, yeah, him, yeah. Ah, he would ne- he w- I would see him at trade shows and stuff. Obviously, he stopped selling those CDs, and uh, but he would always like put his head down. And so I went to his booth and I said, "What's up to him?" And you know, just it's all love, you know what I'm saying? Do you think he ate a lot off them CDs? Oh yeah, a lot of people did. <laughs> a lot of people. <laughs> he said, oh did. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, now, MB Riders has made millions. Facts for lots of people. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and and you know, I I really wasn't. A genius at the music industry. I've learned along the way, uh, but you know, I I was my my forte was making the songs, like most artists, making the art, and uh, and I got screwed a lot of times. I got screwed a lot of times, and finally, when I decided to take a hold of, of 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 the brands that I created and everything, you know, people were uncomfortable with it. You know, I feel it. But it is what it is, bro. How did you enjoy uh, working at the radio station, and how were you able to leverage that for yourself if you did at all? Well, it was fun. <laughs> it was fun working at the radio station because, you know, it, it kept me relevant. It kept me relevant. I mean, I, I went to work at the radio station probably 20 years after my success. You know what I'm saying? And so I'm probably stretching it, maybe like 15, 15 <laughs> years. You know what I'm saying? And so um, it kept me relevant again and like, oh, magic per, uh, c- transition from. And Phoenix, I'm, you know, I'm a pretty popular dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's got a story about a swap meet tape, a quinceanera I DJed, a school I DJed at, a party that we went to together. Uh, everyone's got stories. Even today, when I meet people all over the country, they're like, yeah, my deal's from blah, 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 and you made him a song at the swap meet one day. I'm like, yeah, I made 100,000 of those, one at a time, you know? <laughs> and, so, uh, and so working at the radio station helped me continue to stay relevant. And my deal with Mikey was I get to play uh, I get to play my music on the air. So I would play about one an hour. <laughs> I'm not mad at it. Nobody else had that freedom at the radio station but me. Shout out Mikey Fuentes, my brother for life. Let me do what I had to do, man. Three minutes, four minutes is a long time. Yeah, yeah. Like like a four a, a one minute commercial, uh, you know, goes for like you know eight hundred to a thousand dollars. Back then in yeah, Arizona, then. I, I'm not even sure what they are now. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I would get four grand in airplay every morning. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out Mikey Fuentes. <laughs> you say it again. Yes, that's right. That's my brother, man. He had my back. He still got my back. So how did you end up departing from the station? I just got tired of it. I got tired of it because uh, I, I enjoy more being MC Magic than being a radio jock. Because you were DJing or you were an on-air personality? I was an on-air personality. I was an on-air personality, and it was mornings. Mornings is tough because... You got to wake your ass up super you, well, early. Well, in, in addition to waking up early, um, you have to... After, after the show is done, at least back then, it was mandatory that you had an on-air review meeting. You know, they call it an air check. So we would go to air check afterwards and sit with the program, and he's like, yeah, you could have done this better. You, they just nitpicked the whole show. 
nitpick the whole show, and it helped you to get better because it's so competitive. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You're, you're competing for ratings, for money, for, for advertisers, for all that. And we had a highly rated show. Uh, so in, in addition to, to uh, staying after for the on-air checks, um, I was sleepy already because I'd gotten up at 4 in the morning. So I'd go home, take a little nap, and then about, about 4 or 5 p.m., get up and get something to eat. And then by six, me and D Garcia, that was my honor host, a uh, co-host. Me and D would go to sit at Starbucks and plan tomorrow's show. So we'd be planning skits and planning this and planning that. And that would take us two, three hours. Then go get some sleep so I can wake up at four in the morning, five in the morning. Grinding every day, vicious every day. And then and then and then Friday, Saturdays, and Sundays, I was traveling across the country, still doing MC Magic shows, and then coming back to that. So. Eventually, it was taking a wear and tear. I probably would have keep, kept doing it, but the main thing that was really bothering me is that when, when I'm on the air, I have so much adrenaline that I don't speak in my, in my talking voice. I speak in my DJ voice like, yo, what's up? Uh, shout out to the Mahomie. And you do that like for four hours every morning, and my throat was like, you know, taking a toll. Of course. And I need it for my performances instead. So you had to choose up. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I don't think you chose, you know, at first at first I told the station, you know, I'll keep doing it if you double my pay. Uh And they're like, okay. (laughs) So I was like, damn, I got to keep doing it. So I kept doing it for for another year. And then I was like, you know what? This money's not worth it. You know, they doubled your pay. They doubled my pay. That's crazy. Like that. Just like like that. It was good. I mean, I was I was doing great as an on-air host. And shout out to D Garcia and my brother Mikey Fuentes and Bootleg Kev because he was part of that movement as well. You know, that's right. What you got from back there, buddy? Been awfully quiet today. Talk to me about um, how you uh, found out about J Rocks. I was on Instagram Live when I found out uh, about J Rocks, and uh, and my my. My eye is always out for talent. I'm always looking for talent, but 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 I I I don't want someone that's just oh they they're dope. I want someone that's yo that could be a superstar. And so when I saw that in J Rocks, um, as soon as I accepted her to go live with me, she's like, "Can I sing for you? Can I sing for you?" And I'm like, "Yeah yeah." So she sang a little bit of one of my songs, and then uh, and I'm like, "Oh dope, good job." I go, "You got anything else?" She goes, "You want me to sing one of my songs?" And I was like, yeah. She goes, okay, let me go get my guitar. And I'm like, oh, you play guitar too? So she went and grabbed her guitar, and she was working. Her and her dad had been working on a song a la MC Magic style called Mi Amor. And when she played that little bit that she had, I'm like, let me help you finish it because they only had a little piece. So I took my mobile studio, went to her house, and as soon as I met her and her family, I'm like, yo, this could be a Nasty Boy Records artist. She's the real deal. Like some people have it and some people, Facts. you know, and J-Rocks has it. And so that's why I just wanted to, uh, I put two years of, of, of constant grind and push and money and videos and songs, all that to get her launched off. And, and, and it paid off. What separates someone from being a great artist from a star? A great artist from a star. Well, I think a great artist is a star, but there are mediocre artists out there. You know, there's a lot of people that are very talented at, may say maybe they're great at making music, but they're not the best songwriters. And then there's other people that are great songwriters, but not a great musician. And then there's producers, someone that could jump in and say, songwriter, do this, musician, do that, guitar, do this. So someone that has all the aspects, that's why it's celebrated. Singer, songwriter is such a celebrated thing. Facts. You know, people that can actually sing, write, record, edit, harmonies, all that on their own song. And I think that's what makes a great artist, someone that can do everything. How many people have you ghostwritten for? Um, you don't got to disclose whom. No, I, I, wouldn't, call, I wouldn't call it ghostwriting. I, I, I just say sometimes, sometimes somebody just needs a little extra help. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, and so, but, but to sit down and say I, I ghost wrote everything for you, I, I, would, I wouldn't even take it there. You know, I've helped homies with verses, and I never put them out there either. I don't, I don't, I think it's, I, I don't think it's classy to, exactly. to, to call somebody out and be like, that fool, I wrote that verse. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's rough. That, that's not me. It, it, that's just not my mo. You know. No, no, yeah, yeah. I just figure that's probably a large amount of people. I, I I've, done, I've done a lot of work. <laughs> uh, you know, like like I, like like me and J Rocks. Uh, we wrote. I I say we wrote the songs together, and I gave her fifty percent of the writing credit. But some of the songs I wrote them entirely. You know. 
Well, that's love. And, and but but it, but she knows that. Yeah, she knows that. You know, and her father knows that because we were all there at the same time. Uh, but again, it's it's not really about that. You know what I'm saying? No, absolutely. Yeah. Have you had any other artists that you've had under your wing other than J Rocks? Um, yeah, you know, uh, I was a big fan of Los Terricolas growing up. Oh, shit. And so, uh, Los Terricolas were hot like in 68 to 70. Again, I was a little kid, so that was coming through the radio when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. And so, vivirás en el recuerdo, en los días más difícil, you know. Uh, and so, when I met Nestor, uh, we were doing a festival together, and Los Terricolas were performing. <sighs> And I asked Nestor, yo, would you do a song with me, bro? And, and, and he was surprised that I even knew who he was. You know what I'm saying? So it was dope. And, and he was happy that I knew him. And I was thrilled to meet him. And I ended up signing him to my label. And we did a, and we did a, a, little, a little release together. That's hard. And we, got some, and we got some music that we still haven't released together, me and uh, El Terricola. If you don't mind me asking, is your mother still with us? Uh, yeah, she is. She's so still. then she was able to witness that shit. Yes. <laughs> yes. It's it's funny. It's funny because I've always thought my mom would really recognize that m that my influence came from her music, but it's like she doesn't get it <laughs> because the day that I worked with Jenny Rivera, the day that me and Chino Brown were in the studio in Van Nuys, Chino Brown, that's right. Yeah, me and Chino Brown did a song with Jenny Rivera, and he orchestrated all that. All I did was bring the song to the table. You know what I'm saying? And uh, <laughs> and I was like, I'm in the studio with Jenny Rivera. I'm gonna call my mom. That's what I thought. And, and like, I want to impress my mom. And she's like, Hola, sí, bueno, okay, okay, bye. <laughs> I was like, Mom, you're not excited. That's Jenny Rivera. And so I did the same when I met El Terricola, when I met Nestor, and and I was kind of embarrassed that my mom was just like. Oh, cool. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> whatever. And it's crazy that I say that because him and my mom have the same birth date. That's yeah, March 30th. I was talking to her yesterday. My mom's already getting that uh, that Al 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 Alzheimer's. Yes. I hope I said it right. Alzheimer's. Alzheimer's, yeah. Uh, and, I, and I really don't know the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia. I just know that. I know what you mean. I don't know the difference. The viejito's uh, uh, memory is not right. She, she can still have a good conversation with me, but she'll change the subject like, Whatever, like she say, que haces, mijo? If like she didn't care before, she really don't care now. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I if I say, yo, I'm with the full community, she says, no, pues que comiste. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be like that, but I love my mommy. She's 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 the one. She had my back, you know, because I have six sisters. Damn. And, Are you and the only boy? Only boy. Sick. Are you the oldest or the youngest? No, I'm right in the middle. I have three oh, little sisters and three child. big sisters. Sick. Yeah, and so my mom, like back in the day when I was a kid, novelas were really big, and everybody would be at the no watching the novelas down in the living room, and I was upstairs making noise in my room, and my sisters would come in. If you don't shut that down, we're watching the novela, and it would be my mom that said, "Déjalo en paz." <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's right. And so my mom's always had my back. That's tight. That's right. Yeah. What are some of the now that you mentioned it? What are some of the biggest features that? Or songs you've been involved in that are like dear to you. Um, I really love the fact that I got a chance to work with Jenny Rivera, and that's I, huge. That's I, fucking I, crazy. Yeah, I owe that to, to Chino Brown. We even we shot the music video. Chino you know, Brown. L.A. legendary Esteban Orio oh. shot that music video. Vicious. Yeah. So if you haven't, you've never seen that video. It's beautiful. Jenny did an amazing job, and, and she just killed it. And I love how genuine and sweet of a person she was. A lot of times when you get famous. You become a butt wipe. Yeah, yeah. You know? It sours you a tad bit. It, it's not so much sour, but like an ego. But Jenny was really down to earth. You know, and I remember that because I meet a lot of a lot of my favorite artists and then they let me down because they don't they're, they're not good people. You know what I'm saying? I totally feel it. Yeah. Well, upon meeting you, I could say you're not that type of individual. You're super <laughs> chill. You're chilling, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Nah. Cool. Listen, we're all God's children, brother. We're all God's children, and we need to behave accordingly. I'm just kidding. This one made me talk to six different assistants to get them over here. This shit was crazy, dog. No, I'm just kidding. Straight <laughs> menti also. <laughs> so talk to me about it. My new album, I have a collaboration with Texas legend Michael Salgado. Michael Salgado. I'm going to look him up. Uh, una cruz de madera oh, okay. de la más corriente. Oh. Woo! 
Now that's a very uh, memorable tone and everything. That yes, that. yes. So, so I have a song with Michael Salgado. It's called Para Siempre, and he's excited that I reached out to him. Again, we met backstage at a concert, and he was he was really a dope person. So I wanted to work with him. That's dope. Um, and, and I have a lot of surprises. Obviously, me and Bash and, and Rob, we got that song together. I just recorded a song with Jenny69 a few days ago. That's I'm excited right. about that. That's uh, that's going to be on her project, though. That's not going to be for my album. But I might put her on one of my songs as well. That's dope either way, though. Yeah. That's actually really dope for her. It's sick. It's sick. I love Jenny. I love Jenny. Me and Jenny have been friends for a long time. Actually. Jenny's cool as shit, man. Yeah. I like her. And so, yeah, but there, there's no, there's no cheese, man. There's no BS. It's really about... It's really about show love to get love. That's what life is about. I feel it. Yeah, because the more love you show, the more it usually comes back. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. In most cases. Yeah. Damn. But, uh, oh, I brought some merch, bro. You know, everywhere I go, everywhere I go, there's always females. There's no females here, bro. And, my, and all my stuff, all my merch is for females. Don't trip. This was a sister. Oh, I know. Everybody's got a sister. I got a wife. You're yeah, good. Yeah. This right here is called my Lost in Love palette. Talk to me about this. Hold up. Look That's at that. That's fine. I want to get lost in love with you. Look how, look Who how, did the drawing? Who did the artwork? Can this we get a artwork, shout out? This artwork work was done before I got involved. And, and I want to remember her name, but I can't remember her name. She's a dope little artist. Uh, Lucky Lashes is the one that originally got, gave me the idea to do makeup. And she did the artwork on that one. Um, That's but all my other palettes... Right. You know, is is what I uh, I organize everything. How how did this come about? Of all the shit you could have did for merchandising, you chose makeup, and I'm not mad at it. No, 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 because it, clearly you have a large female demo. It you know makes sense for, 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 with my demographic. It makes absolutely. It makes sense. sense with my demographic. Are and you it signing? Was, how often do you sign them and shit like that? Every like, day, baby. Every day. Look, they automatically come with my signature already. See that. Yep. We want the one that you wrote, yeah, not Yeah, but I still sign in the front and dedicate it to Lisa or, you know, whoever it is, you know. How many of those you got on you today, brother? I, I brought, like, three of them. I brought, Perfect. I brought Lost in Love, Sexy Lady, and So Fly. I'm gonna need They're the, all named after my songs. I'm going to need the Lost in Love one. I got you. I got you with Lost in Love. And I also brought, this This is my bag right here. This is the MC Magic bag. It's called the Baby Icon right here. <laughs> See that? I designed it myself. <laughs> it's, it's got the MC Magic uh, uh, junk on it. All the hardware details, baby, went, went into uh, getting it right. Merch is such a the big baby part. icon. It's called <laughs> the baby icon because listen, listen, bro. Everybody has a little dream inside to be an icon. So Facts. we all have a baby icon inside of us. I fucking love it. That's what this is. I'm rocking with that. And, and so inside the baby icon, I got the MC Magic Diamond Tumbler. Hey, that's hotter than an infected belly button, bro. Damn, that's kind of hot. <laughs> <Nice>. Yes. <laughs> well, Luisito wants to take the bag. Do you have like 10 of those damn no, bags? But everybody's got a, a, a sister, a, a, a wifey, a girl. Uh, you know. How many fucking tumblers did you bring today? I only brought one tumbler. I brought one baby icon and I brought three pallets. I think the tumbler is going to have to go on the shelf. There you go. Yeah, put the tumbler on the shelf. I got you for a tumbler meal. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Yeah, fire. That's pretty fresh. Fact, I love it. I love it. And of course, the, my baby icon backpack. That's a gift uh, as well. Uh, maybe you, you and you and uh, I wanna be lost. They can decide who's, who's gonna get it. It's the baby icon. <laughs> I can yeah. put the thing in there now. Yeah, sexy lady. And, and the dope part is that I design all the artwork, all the shades. Who's the model? Uh, all the packaging. That 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 uh, that model. Her name is Elena, and she's a sexy lady with pretty brown eyes. So it fit the cover. You're a fool. What's how how much are you selling these bad boys? The, for? Uh, these on the website they're like forty five bucks a piece. Yeah. See that? This this is the so fly. That's fire. Yeah. The like the the whole shit about that is crazy. It's so fun doing that. That's another. I, I discovered that I like designing as well. Like product design is so, it's a lot of fun, bro. What are you selling this on? Like Shopify or something? Yes. MCMagicEvents.com. Yeah, that's right. MCMagicConcerts.com. Oh, shit. My bad. Yeah, when you get to MCMagicConcerts.com, just hit the home button and you'll see all the merch right there. So it's actually NastyBoyRecords.com because that's my, my official website. I feel it. Yeah. But yeah, you guys got some palettes. You guys decide, you know. You're going to put some makeup on my boy? Nah, it ain't, it ain't for y'all. Nah, 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 nah. 
I'll give it to a special lady or put it on the oh, shelf. Everybody's got a special girl, a pretty girl. That's and I really wanted to bring my talk box so we could have fun with it today, but the airlines. I know I was uh, devastated. Kind of messed me up this morning. I was gonna get a mean dedication right now. And I always tell my wife, we I have to fly in a day early for everything because you never know what could go wrong. It always happens, you know. They haven't called you and Something. told you to come get your shit. No, no, they told me that it'll be there, you know, by this time, by like noon. <laughs> you know, so it is what it is. I'll go back to the airport and, and grab it. Honestly, I thought you were going to come with the heat. I can't flame you up like that. You're a good guy. You're a great guy. <laughs> it's not like everyone else. You know, some people have it bad up here. I see. I see. <laughs> Damn. You're the man, though. No, I saw love. I, I thank you guys. We just came to just give you your flowers. That's it. Man, I appreciate that. And I love you guys for it, man. Uh, food community had my back. You know what I'm saying? And, and we're here. How did you find the food community? How did you come about the page? And what do you think about it? Talk about it. Um, I think you guys reposted one of my fans singing at a concert, that's and that's right. how I found the food community. Fire, you know. So they tagged me, tagged me on it, or something like that. You know, I'm real active on social media. I really, I really check things out. You know. No, you're definitely participating in social media because mm -hmm. you messaged us right away. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And uh, it, it, think, think about it. When somebody's trying to show you love, it's it's stupid not to take it. You know, it's dumb. I feel it. No, no, no. Tell me how you've been in the game for so long. I know a lot of artists, they just come and go, but you've been able to stay afloat. Facts. What do you feel like is one of the keys? Um, Like like when my song started going down from the radio play, it was it was like a, 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 a time between when we were popular on radio and when the internet started jumping off. Uh. So there was a dead zone right there. And during that time, uh, I couldn't just sit back and do nothing. So that's when I took my swap me hustle mentality and I started booking a booth at the Arizona State Fair. Boom. So it cost me five grand to book a booth at the Arizona State Fair. And, and I, would ha I had a combo. You buy two CDs and MC Magic signed poster for 20 bucks. So we ended up at the, during the State Fair season, the first time that we did it, we took the, the $5,000 rent and we turned it into like 50 grand. <laughs> And so that hustle, that that hustle really was a level up. And I and then when I was doing that, that was a time until the internet came in. Then when the internet started, that's when I was like, oh damn, there's a whole new avenue. This is better than radio. And so the reach is much and so, so I did that for a while. But you know what? There's there's really no replacement for hard work. There's there's, there's nothing that can substitute hard work. If you sleep until noon, get to work at two start thinking about what you're going to eat and then come home to play video games and then watch YouTube videos, you waste your day. Facts. And so whatever you put in is what you get out. And I've always been like, like today, like, like the, t like today, I don't know what the top shows on Netflix are. I don't have time for that. You know, I'm, I'm doing MC magic stuff. I'm writing songs. I'm going to work with this artist, with that artist. I've got my mobile studio. I got to book these concerts. I got these deposits. I got to get online right now and send this wire uh, for one of the bookies that we have in, in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And so <laughs> it's just it's just always on the grind. You know, that's that's really what it is. It's on the grind. And a lot of people, they want it just because they think they're hot. See, like Drake said, a cold line. He says, you know, you made it when you are who you think you are. Bars. Let me pick that apart for you, bro. Like, I meet fools that are just starting out. They're like, yo, bro, if you want to blow up your company, you need to sign me. That attitude alone is like, I was scared, bro. That attitude, like, there's no humbleness. Like, they feel like they're entitled to be the next Coy Leroy or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, right off the top like that. And no, I'm just, I, I'm, I'm, I'm from the old school, bro. You got to put in a little bit of work. Facts. Yeah, like you're not just going to get magically f put on, my boy. No, Because no. nobody put you on when you were grinding through the f swami. You yeah. miraculously, God put yeah. you on, baby. That's, and, that, and that reminds me of J-Rocks again. She initiated. She put it down. I said, we're going to do a song together. And she was overjoyed with happiness. Humbleness is a had that humble and then and then when we got in the studio i would say sing this and she would try and she goes i i can't hit i know you can let me show you this is how we're gonna do it and then i would get her to go out of her comfort zone but she was down for the grind you know and still is open to instruction is a yes. is a very teachable. critical thing yes yeah being teachable. teachable is a thing but i think that's what it is bro is always being willing to put in some hard work you know i feel it so then you're an audio engineer as well I have to be. I mixed all my first four albums. Yeah.
can do everything. <laughs> Pretty much. Highly stressed sometimes. Yeah. Uh, that, back that, in the day. Back in the day. That's why I had to get rid of like some of the people uh, that I used to work with. It's because it's a heavy load as it is. Facts. It's a heavy load as it is. And to bring extra drama into it. Unnecessary. Yeah. Unnecessary. So, yeah. You, 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 I mean, from the from the songwriter, beat maker. Like, I made the beat to Lost in Love, and I don't know how to make beats. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know how to collect them publishing checks, uh, baby. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> As Cap, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> That's f***ing amazing. Yeah. I already feel slightly stressed for you, but... You've made you've you've ascended since then, so it doesn't even matter anymore. Yeah, you but you know it. what? I, I, I aside from all that, God is good. God is good. Like like people don't realize the gift that the day is. Like God gives you a day. What you gonna do with it? Mm -hmm. God gave you an amazing day. The sunshine, two eyeballs, two legs, two hands. What you gonna do with it? Sit there and cry? Yeah. So ungrateful of people to be that way. Facts. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful to. To my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I'm not mad at it. Yes. That's amazing, dude. Uh, what's one of the biggest obstacles you had to overcome? Facts. As, as a Latino yeah. in the game. One of the biggest obstacles was to get people to hear your music. And just to get your music heard, because you can record a song. Nowadays, there's the internet, but back then, it there was radio. There wasn't shit. So getting on radio was such a challenge. Like, I will call the nighttime jock. I would call the nighttime jock. I remember his name was Simon Bungie. And I was uh -huh. like, Simon, man, won't you play one of my songs? He's like, you a local artist? Go, yeah. He goes, make me an intro for my show and I'll think about it. And that's what DJs used to do back in the day. So now you're doing these fake jingles, these crappy little jingles about how great he is just so I could hear my voice on the radio. And so getting on the radio was a tough, tough situation. But once we got going, you know, it was like lighting a match, you know? Mm. But yeah, that was a big obstacle. Uh, and obviously, finance, finances is always an obstacle, too, because when you don't know how to, how to manage money and someone gives you a $100,000 check, that's dangerous. I ran through $100,000, like, in a month. <laughs> very, very, um, I wouldn't say irresponsible. I paid a lot of bills. And yeah, shit. yeah. But. I mean, when I, when I had two hundred grand in the bank, I thought I was the man touchable i thought i was hugh hefner <laughs> until it ran out and like <laughs> yo i better pack up and go back to the swap me <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy how that works like when we don't when we've never touched 100k then you touched and you're like yeah I'm gonna yeah like 10 more of those of course no a lot of people think 10 grand is life-changing you know what i'm saying i heard I've, I've 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 heard verses of dudes saying you know uh it feels amazing when i got 10 grand in my pocket and i'm like oh, all right you know what i'm saying they haven't. The, <laughs> it depends on your lifestyle too. Everything is perspective, bro. Yeah. Yeah, because if we're right here driving for uh, oil change on a foreign is a pretty penny these right, days. Right. It's unnecessary. Right. Mm -hmm. I don't drive foreign anymore because I've come to the realization I don't need to prove anything to anyone, and I've already done it. That's it. Did it. Yeah. Let's just be economical yeah. and buy some dinosaurs for the baby or yeah, whatever. Yeah, no doubt. Shit and and, and when, an, an, another good thing that I really like about me <laughs> is that I'm not into cars. Oh, you're good. And man, that, that's such an expensive. What hobby. is your vice, sir? Music. Music and my fans and my concerts. That is my vice. What are you spending the most amount of money on? That's what I'm trying to get to. My wife. What is she in? <laughs> she, she's got all, she's got all the bags. She's got, ah, she's got you're a victim. I mean, yeah, I mean, my wife, my wife. Yeah, we take care of her, <sighs> but she's been there through all of it, you know? No, it's your wife. 28 years, bro. That's your lady. Yeah. All these songs are about her. Let's be real. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And uh and, and you know when I when, when I give her a shout out in a song, like say like one of her nicknames in my song, she acts like she don't hear it. And she, <laughs> you know? It, 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 it's it, my my wife is so amazing. I met her at the swap meet actually. Yeah. How many years ago was that? When you met her? I met her twenty nine years ago because we were married twenty eight. It only took a oh, year. Oh, it only took a year. Oh baby. yeah. You moved yeah. quick. You yeah. were a Playing. Nah, this is mine right here, baby. <laughs> down payment right. on it from the gate. Do you guys have children? Yeah, we have we have two sons together, and I already had one child when we got married. So well, I have I'm three boys together. Me and my wife have two. Dang, that's dope, man. What's it like being MC Magic's kid? I mean, when when, when I've heard people ask my son that, and he's like, "That's my dad. He's always been my dad. It's just my dad, you know." It, just, it is what it is. But now that we talk about this, my youngest, Antonio, we call him Tito. 
Uh, we're working on his album. He oh, like how to steal right he's now. On that peso pluma vibe on that wow, junior Wow, wow, yeah. wow, that's fire. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm excited for his album. We got this one song called Todo Se Acabó. That's oh, hot. How old is this young man? Tito's 24. Bring his ass, send him over here. I will, I will. Once we're ready to do press and all that, we'll bring him in and and because he's kind of shy, bro. Let us let us go first, if possible. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we'll get Tito Cardenas first on the food community. I'm not. Uh, I'm just. I'm just being honest. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You yeah. know how it goes. You remember what it's like. We need that exclusive first. I'll drop it fast. Don't yeah, for it. sure. No, no, for sure. We'll definitely give you guys give you guys one, and 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 he'll be happy to come. You know, he'll be happy to come and that's amazing. And, and start doing press. He already works with me because he's been working with me since he was a little kid. Of course, he's my merchandise manager. <sighs> Got this food grinding hard yeah. with the palate. Yeah, and he's definitely he's definitely earning his his way. Uh, but when his music comes out, it's definitely gonna be something different. How do you feel about it right now? I'm I'm so proud. How I'm, far in are you? We got like four songs already. So how uh, many do you intend on dropping on this project? Ten. Ten for the first album. Ten I respect for the first it. album, and, and it's amazing. My man Lucito right here, he works with Bobby D and with the uh, with Peso Pluma, and he and he uh, he helped uh, he took Dito backstage at the, at the Peso Pluma concert. That's right. So we got. He's the only one who got a picture. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and and, and he loves uh, Luis too, man. It's all family with, with our with our. That's group, love, man. fool. That's dope of you. Very dope of you. Yeah, yeah. No, that's my that's, that's my little homie, Luis. I knew I let you park VIP status for a reason, <laughs> my boy. Because I was gonna let you park. No, on the and street. he's and he's got a little daughter named Melanie, such a sweetheart. I'm sure she gives him a couple of canas here and there, but that's right. Yeah. No, it's all love, bro. I mean, love is life, and life is living. I feel it. Is there anything you'd like to leave the people? Hold up, with? I got a question. <laughs> Have you done any shows in Mexico? And how was that? With Nestor. No, in Mexico. Oh, in Mexico. Yes, yes. One of the first rappers that was really getting the, the whole Mexican rap mu movement out is my bro, Secan. Legendary. Right? So Secan reached out to me back in 2013, and he asked me to do a couple songs with him. And and uh, and then and, and I started going on tour with him in Mexico. So we do Guadalajara, uh, Ciudad Mexico, Puebla, and just all over the place. You know what I'm saying? And... Matter of fact, me and Sekan, uh, his biggest record on YouTube is the one we did together. I think it's got like 150 million spins. Well, that's hard. Yeah, it's dope. Uh, and so I have one too. Uh, the one he, we did for me is called Loco. And on, again, one of my biggest records as well. You never get any problems with like the police over there? You know, uh, every time I go to Mexico, you, you just have to move. You have to move intelligently. You have to move intelligently, and uh, and usually we have a uh, uh, a local a local person handling us. Mm. Like you don't just call a black car black car service. It's someone that is from that city that's got to maneuver us in and out. Of, and because because there is possibility of danger, you know. Absolutely. You know, you see Fuerza Regida. They they they're well connected, and they still had a little issue out there. You know. Mm -hmm. Were they there, or was it just a security guard? Um, just security. I think it was just security. So he. I guess had an issue. He he, he was, uh, but I respect it, and I get what you're saying. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Are you gonna tell him about us getting pulled over, or what, is that where this is leading? Oh no, <laughs> we got pulled over in Mexico. Oh yeah, it happens, bro. It, it happens. Cute. I didn't get. I didn't have to pay nothing. We got away with it. Well, we didn't do shit. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that's that's that, that's that's almost customary. My son Daniel. Uh, my son Daniel is a professional scooter rider. He's in Japan right now. But he travels all over the world. Like, he was in Africa this year. He's, he's in Spain for competition. When you say scooter, you mean like a fucking Razor. Like a Razor scooter. Yeah, but these are pro scooters. A Razor is really like... Some bullshit. I yeah, feel yeah, it. Yeah. But, but yeah. basically, a, yeah, a like real that. scooter. Yeah, yeah, he pushes. He's definitely... A, you know, he, he, This is what they call riding. They're pushing. Yeah, yeah, they're pushing. Yeah. So, right now, he's pushing in, in Japan. Uh, but the only country that they pulled them and the scooter boys over to shake their pockets was Mexico. <laughs> That's fucked up, huh? Right? Yeah. But he was with a bunch of hueritos, obviously. Uh, now, they didn't get much. They didn't get much. But it was crazy because they hired a taxi, and even the taxi was in on it. Damn, that's nasty. It's crazy, man. It's crazy out there. Is that true, MC Magic? I don't think the biggest enemy is your own people. I think people without resources do scandalous things. I respect it. People without resources. Uh, and a lot of times, even if you don't have resources, as long as you got faith, things can come together. And, uh, and you know, 
I, I also want to say this because I have a lot of young fans. I've never been drunk or high one day in my life. Really? Mm. Never, not once. And I tell that to my kids. I'm like, if you never start, you'll never have the BS that comes with it. Facts. You know what I'm saying? And so I think that's another important issue that once you start playing with drugs and, uh, or, or just, you know, going out just a party, look at how, how ugly things that happen, but they call it party. Horrible things. Uh, and so once you start doing that stuff, I think it could lead in the wrong direction. It could lead to I've had like my nephew, for instance, my nephew, Nick. He was hanging out with his homeboys, and they're drinking, and they're, like, and they're reminiscing of their other homeboy that died. They're like, let's go drink at the cemetery, bro. Let's go pour it on his grave. And they did. And some fool got mad over there because they were at the grave, and he got stabbed in the face at the cemetery. And I'm like, yo, what the hell? So he's, he, he got gashed like from here to here. That's wild. You know, uh, I mean, plastic surgery and all that just to get him back to look normal. And it's like, you, if you wouldn't have been drinking, that wouldn't have happened. That's that's my reasoning. That's my reason. I respect it. Yeah. I don't. I used to, I used to get heavily intoxicated when I was a younger man, from like sixteen to twenty, whatever. Yeah. And uh, I used to do drugs, not not meth or anything, but I used to smoke weed and a couple other things or whatever. But um, yeah, that ain't it. Yeah, no. Nah, I actually, re- <sighs> I mean, it made me who I am today. Right now, I know better, but. Had someone been able to teach me rather than me endure some critical shit, it yeah, yeah. would have been much more preferred. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, you know, it's like it's it's like the old saying. You know, uh, um, a dummy learns off of his own mistakes. A wise man can learn off of others' mistakes. Facts. <laughs> and so, not everybody's got that wise mentality. Be like, oh, Bobby did that, and then that happened. I'm not going that route. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. Uh we were a tight knit circle, so we weren't familiar with other people's experiences until it was too yeah. late. So you've never, ever, no. ever, never, ever. Mm-mm. When I was when I was a kid, did you drink champagne for your brain? I, I definitely, definitely drank champagne, and I have had champagne like at midnight uh, on New Year's Eve and stuff. That's light, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're not getting f-ed up, though. Is right? What you're no, saying. no, never like more than. That. MC Magic is not saying he's never drank. He's just saying he doesn't give. Up. Right, right. No, and I actually took a shot once, but because I thought it was water. You said once. I once. like it. And my son went crazy. He's like, "Pops, that's not water." My son Tito. It's too late though. It was in Vegas. I was just getting off stage. Somebody said, "Here you go, bro." And like, "A la madre." That was. It, it was, was like, too late. It was a whoosh, like a big fire thing that happened in my in my face all of a sudden. You know? And in your gut, probably. Yeah. And it was just a shot, so I didn't I didn't have very many uh, like. You've never smoked weed once. Never been never been high. I've been in a room with everybody smoking before. That's a pain in the ass. Yeah, but I've never been high. You yeah. had contact high that day for sure, fool. I don't think so. Well, if you didn't feel altered, then you're good. Yeah, I don't think so. And that's another thing. You just said a real important word. Altered. Altered. Facts. Is because then you're not. Lo- you're no longer who you are. Facts. You are not. Yeah. So I, I don't. I don't like not being me. I like that. You know what I mean? Yeah, some people encourage me to try to get drunk with them, <laughs> and I'm like, why? Yeah. I, it's unnecessary. Yeah. I'll enjoy a shot with you and maybe a beer, but yeah. why do I need to get f- trashed, fool? Like, why? Yeah. It's just ne- it's just never been the highlight of, 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 of my of my days. I mean, our celebration is, is going to get food after the concert. You know what I'm saying? Let's I go like get it. some you know, late night Denny's or order something and have it in the room. Uh, even if we have catering, we just still get food, you know? I like it. I'm sure every. I'm sure a lot of people are celebrating with alcohol and shit around you. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's there's always you know people's but that's ri- cool. people's writers. They got to have this and that. They got to have their, their you know case of modelo or whatever. What's on your writer? Uh, nothing. I don't. I don't have a very you know expensive writer. Really, my writer consists of my equipment. I make sure the stage that I have a keyboard stand that I have. You know, uh, the you just pack. want your shit together so that I way. I really just want to put on a good performance. Exactly. Yeah. I'm not a diva like per se. You know. There, there are some artists that are tough to deal with. I've seen you do a warehouse show maybe within the last six months. I was on stage with you. Clearly, you didn't. You you walked. It's a thing. You know, you walked through the crowd. You had the flag. You got up there. You did your shit and you dipped. I totally feel it. But, yeah, you weren't really tripping off shit. No. <laughs> you just wanted to do a good job. And and, and and it's a blessing because the music that I'm that I make actually brings people together instead of starting, you know, 
Yeah, no fights broke out and fights. during the middle of your so, set. So when there's a lot of homies, they're like, yo, bro, c- c- can my daughter get a picture with you, bro? Can, can my wife get a photo with you? And so it's it's really love. Yeah, it's a family-friendly environment yeah, it when is. magic's it on is. the card yeah. most of the time. You know, we get mom and daughter at concerts all the time. That's dope. The mom and daughter combination. Even the nana comes out once in a while, so it's love. <laughs> <laughs> Legendary. Yes. Has anyone in the industry gave you a hard time because you're a Chicano trying to do music? Not that I can recall. Mm. Not that I can recall. I mean, I, I I've had songs with Twista, songs Fire. with Too Short. Fire. Uh, that it, it was just it, it was just love. They're, they've always shown love. Matter of fact, I was recently on on Dub C and C J Max podcast. That's fire. Uh, you know, they invited me to come out to, to their podcast, and it's all love. I mean, they just show respect. Uh, I, if, if anything, I've had people tell me, if anybody ever comes at you wrong, you let me know. That's right. I've def- I definitely ha- have more of that than, than the opposite. That's amazing. Mm-hmm. You're the man. I'm just thinking of everything you've done over your career. It's you're see. in your own lane, to say the very least. Oh, yeah. I don't yeah. think anyone... Um, yeah, no one's fucking with you, really. You're in your, you're in a league all all alone. That's amazing, bro. Cause in four years, in four years, I'm gonna be sixty years old. You're old, fool. You're old. <laughs> as <laughs> and you want to know what? It occurred to me when you said it was like the mid '60s when you were listening to certain music yes. with your mom in the in the pad. Yes. And it. It just didn't strike me to talk, yeah. call you an old ass fool. But now yeah. that we're here, but nobody in this room can beat me in a push up contest, bro. How many push ups can you do? How many do you want? You already backflip, fool. You don't <laughs> gotta prove yourself no more. I almost forgot MC Magic backflip, fool. <laughs> and you're fucking in four years, years brother. Old fool. Yeah. Yes, yes. What's the what's the secret to making it far? Because right now I'm experiencing a, a secret health issue. What's it like? Yeah, uh, definitely being sober. That's um, yeah, being sober helps. And, <laughs> and and like I told you, when I'm away from my wife, I, I splurge on bad food. But when I'm home, like I don't have coffee in the morning. I have green juice in the morning. You know what I'm saying? How healthy are you eating at home? Like legit? Like how how serious is it? It's not extreme, but my wife does take care of me because she ha- she ha- she has to eat healthy for herself. Perfect. So then it's splash- so I get the benefits from it. I'm not going to lie. I experienced some weird bout intestinal weird gastritis or some shit. Yeah, what yeah. They called it. And uh, for that week, I fasted. I ate extremely clean and wholesome and all this bullshit. Yesterday, I went to a quinceanera. And I had two plates of birria and I had some chili. <laughs> Went to the restroom today, my boy. Looked like strawberry swirl. I was scared as f- Yeah. I, I heard this lie. comment that I really believe, bro. That I really believe because it's it's helped me at times as well. Uh, and I don't have any health issues. Gracias a Dios. Thank God. Yeah. I had Thank asthma you. as a kid, but I, I ran faster My fat ass asthma. has my asthma pump in my pocket right now. <laughs> no cap. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was the one with no cap. That would have been even more funny. <laughs> so, uh, but but the one health advice that I heard that I really believe is that fasting cures anything. I recently saw a clip of that. They said at hour 15, your cells begin to degenerate. Any cancers? Mm-hmm. I was like, yeah. Yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and start fasting for 23 hours a day. It's not life. easy. If you feel like, sh- well, I don't feel like shit. I feel good, but like, it's in my mind that I'm going through some little weird shit and it just seems like the safest thing to do is not consume <laughs> trash shit. You know what I mean? So I'm going to try to, yeah, I mean, I think I had oats and a banana today after the gym. Yeah. So, I mean, we're doing good. Yeah, I haven't ate breakfast yet, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm sad I have to take you to CPK right now because I'm not going to be able to eat pizza. Well, you, if you want pizza, let's go to pizza. Huh? I can't. I cannot. No? I'm doing bad right now. Fool, I just told you the video <laughs> ru- ruined me. Yeah, you yeah, want to go yeah. do salads? Take so who wants to eat a barbecue easy. chicken salad? Yeah, and you know what I've learned to really love is raw fruit. That's the way. I love raw fruit. Like my wife uh, makes me uh, agua de melon, agua de sandia. And it's just so delicious, man. But uh, not in the first time you take it. After you drink You have it to get accustomed to it. Yeah. Once you're, but once you're in the zone, yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah, I really do love Like, like when, I, when I want a snack... Instead of grabbing a Snicker, I go grab a little thing that's sandia from from uh, Albertsons or Fries or whatever. That's right, man. You know, just a little something there. But yeah, I, I definitely knock out at least a hundred push-ups a day, 
and I run with my dogs, and sometimes they drag me because they're real strong dogs. That's right. What kind of dogs you got? Uh, I have two Labradoodles and a Husky. I could understand the Husky dragging you, but the Labradoodles? No, they're the strong ones. The Labradoodles really? are the strong ones, yeah. Yeah. Why is it not occurring? Like, why is it not registering in my mind if this is a big ass, buff ass dog or something like that? No, like, like I'm not, no pit bulls. No, never been in the pit bull thing. I got a pit bull, but it's not like I clipped his ears and all kinds of crazy shit. Yeah. He doesn't have a spike collar. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's chilling. No, my dogs are super loving, but when we go out, when we go out in the open, they love their morning walk. Man, they just, they're so aggressive. They're dragging you. Yeah. I like it. Yeah, my neighbors tell me, you need to buy one of those collars so you can shock them. And I go, man, ah, let them fools be wild. Yeah. They be stronger because I have to sprint with them in the morning. You know what I'm saying? Sick asshole. A hundred push-ups a day. Yeah. I can't say that I Today was leg day, so I definitely did, did zero push-ups today. Leg you know? day? It was leg day. Chicken so. legs? <laughs> nah. They're fat right now. But they'll, they'll, get, they'll get back to their chicken form. We'll be good. <laughs> Hundred push-ups a day, huh? It's all love. I yeah, I've done that since I was in jail, fool. Wow. <laughs> he said, wow. "Yeah, great correlation." <laughs> wow, there it is. And I've never been to jail either. Don't so. go to jail. Like, don't, you're old as shit. You don't belong in jail. I'm not trying to go to jail, bro, for Damn. no reason. Yeah, yeah. Nice. God is good, man. God is good, and 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 we celebrate that every day. I like it, man. That's dope. See magic is at the full community. <laughs> <laughs> the most PG interview you ever had, right here, baby. Zzz. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Do you have anything else for this fine gentleman before we clock out? Anything you want to leave the people with? Nah, just God bless everybody, man. That's right. Don't don't nobody don't nobody think it's not possible. It is, and. Uh, I like Andrew Tate a lot. He says that depression is cured with exercise. So y'all get out there and do some exercise. Mm, that's right. Well, speaking of Andrew Tate, do you feel like the the hate that he gets is fair? Because he uh, does get it online. Yeah, he does get a lot. But we are we living in a world of extremes right now. People are extremely hateful, extremely uh, divisive, Want to cancel extremely feminine. Mm. Uh, <laughs> and, this, and 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 but it's so. But crazy thing is, you can't be extremely manly. That's wrong. Oh. Mm. So, oh. I, I really do not. I really do not subscribe to the thought that adding the word toxic to anything just makes it bad. That's Facts. just a word, bro. Mm. And so, uh, yeah. But I am a fan of Andrew Tate. I believe in, in what he's doing. I believe in what he's done. And and I hope that uh you know that he comes uh, that that he's, what is it, released of all all his all his charges or whatever. But yeah, the dudes helped me shoot. That's the top G. Top G for life. <laughs> <laughs> top G for life. So shout out Andrew Tate. <laughs> That's right. That's it for you, buddy. There it is. This is MC Magic, the legend, the top Arizona fool, for sure. At the very least. Damn that the the acronym is TAF. Top Arizona food TAF. That's TAF. The TAF. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's the TAF. What's up? That's the wolf. That's the <laughs> wizard of fools back there. <laughs> and my name is LA Icon. This is the Fool Community Podcast. We highly appreciate y'all. Samsung Magic, everybody. We out. These <laughs>